Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear kind God, patient Father, we as your children come before you in this morning, Father. We say thank you for your love for us, that you have granted us, Father, another opportunity to enter the forecourts, Father, of your temple. It was not within our plan, Father, that we would assemble here today, Father, but your wisdom, Father, has allowed us to come together as a congregation, Father. We are humbled by your love and your patience with us, Father. There are so many aspects of our lives that we struggle to understand and we battle, Father, because circumstances tend to overwhelm us and common sense that should be common for a child of God, Father, becomes challenged. And as your children, Father, we become reliant on you and the connection that we have with you. And Father, we are aware also that there are many aspects of our lives, Father, that is for us a stumbling block. And Father, we are aware also that today, Father, there are many also that, that eat their bread in tears. Father, we have come together as a special congregation today, Father. We have also the need to take leave of a loved one, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a grandmother, a wife, a friend. For the one that has been amongst us for so many years, Father, and it has been within your wise counsel, Father, to make a decision to end, Father, that which we have come to understand to be normal. And Father, we struggle with this. It has been a shock, Father, that we have not been prepared for. And so, Father, we also realize now that we are assembled here because there is a special message for us. A message, Father, that comes out of the beyond, out of the flesh, Father, born out of your spirit, Father, that would encourage us and allow us also, Father, to use it as a benchmark to move forward. Father, we ask you so please in this day that you would bless the family. Father, there are those also that are aware that we have assembled here. And they also are connected with us, Father. And we ask you so please that the message would touch all their hearts, Father. And we feel their prayers and their nearness. And though we are separated by distance, Father, we are together. And we serve you as our God. And we thank you that you allow us, Father, through these small movements of technology, Father, that we are able to to be as close to, to you, Father, and that we can be connected to the altar in a moment like this. Father, we are also aware that our nearness to you, Father, is also dependent on our heart. And this is why we bow before you, Father. We humble ourselves and thank you in advance, Father, for that which you will share with us today. We ask also, Father, that you would grant us peace upon our heart and upon our mind, Father, and that we are not a disturbance to ourselves and rob ourselves of that, Father, which is eternal. And the holiness of this moment, Father, as you have entered into our midst now, as we have called on the Trinity, Father, that you are a part of this congregation, Father. And we thank you for those, even out of the beyond, that are allowed to be part of this, Father, to be a witness here today. And Father, we ask you so please that you grant special balsam for the wound, Father. And time will never truly eradicate it, Father. But we are not ignorant, Father. And so we are aware that we now become dependent on the Spirit to touch us. We are now dependent, Father, on our nearness to you, Father, because of we have the fact that we have sanctified ourselves when before we entered here. And so we ask of you, Father, for a few moments of peace, of joy, of understanding. We ask it in your Son, Jesus Christ, and sake. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, friends and family, to the bereaved family as well, I greet you this morning with a special word out of Second Corinthians, and I read from chapter five, <clears throat> the verse four, sorry, from six to eight. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident. Yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In Afrikaans, my little brothers and sisters, I read the 5th verse, 
die verse 6 tot 8. Daarom het ons altijd goeie moed en weet dat als ons in die lichaam inwoon, ons van die Heere uitwoon. Want ons wandel dier geloof, want ons wandel dier geloof en niet dier aanschouwing nie. Maar ons het goeie moed en verkies om liever uit die lichaam uit te woon en bij die Heere in te woon. Tot so ver. confirmed this morning's text word and I share with you the beauty of the Spirit of God nobody knew what text was going to be used this morning en hulle het net Godse machtigheid beaam dier om dit voort te bring there can never be a better place for a child of God to be than in the house of the Lord. This morning we don't have an obituary, but before I go into the word, allow me just to share a few thoughts on Jillian Charmaine Nolan, as we have come to, to know her to be a mother, a friend, a wife, a grandmother, a daughter, a sister, Maybe I first share with you what the name Jillian Charmaine means. It means that she's generous. That's part of her personality. It means that she's trusting. It means the one explanation given is that she's a child of the gods. Dear brother, dear sister, <clears throat> and it also means that she wants the world to be a better place and so she lives by her beliefs and the values and maybe I just share with you how trusting she can be Ronnie can so big at the eyesight skinner yeah you know Ronnie has been retired now for about six years so obviously when one is retired you've got to watch your pennies 
and they would make lunch, but to provide for supper as well. And after lunch, if somebody knocks on the door and they are hungry, then Jillian would say, no, I'm going to give them something to eat. And Ronnie would say, but that's our supper. And she would say, Maras no brood in the kast, I can feel sandwich, Mark. That was the heart of your wife, our friend. And we may think to ourselves, you know, maybe I share with the congregation, you know, they met each other when they were, I think you were 17 and Jillian was 16. So they've been friends since 1974, is that right? Yes. And what was remarkable about that, and I know this because we had the 40th, about two years ago, I think it was. So they've been friends for many years. They've been husband and wife for many years. And I just want to share with you, I actually went back to, to my notes when I asked Jillian, what is it about Ronnie that you feel so, that, that makes you feel so special? And the response was, he spoils me silly with absolutely everything. He cooks, cleans, attends to the bills, does the shopping, sorts out the issues at home. I would be completely lost without him. Not because I don't know how to do these things, but it is our home life. It is our home life. And she said something that I thought was so remarkable. His prayers will move mountains and I love his prayer life because it strengthens my faith. Is that not a beautiful family life? And so you would have heard in my opening prayer that it is a yardstick for us. And this for the Nolan family, we're a little bit envious because that is so beautiful. To be able to live your life out in such a manner. And we have all been under your prayer, my friend. And I maybe just share something else. Ronnie's response about what Jillian meant to him. Her humbleness and willingness to help anyone, even those that she doesn't know. People that knocks on the door for food, neighbors, friends, family, and she repeated, anyone. And I thought, could I do that? And today, today, dear brothers and sisters, friends and family, to those that are here, we need to take leave of Jillian. And so it is a message also for us. <coughs> Out of the beyond, today the Lord asks us, I have placed examples amongst you for you to use as a yardstick, as a measurement as to how close you have come to that which is expected of a child of God. Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you know, when we are faced with these moments in our lives when something happens in our, in our life. You know, we don't have a diary. We don't have a year planner where we have a date penciled or written in ink that says today you will attend a funeral. Maybe today it is someone that you least expected it to to be dear brother and sister and so we live our lives in the manner that pleases God and when you are able to aspire to the quality the values that not only a Christian understands but a child of God and it becomes for you your personality then then God is well pleased and you know I may be share something that we are not maybe familiar with. Things were not always easy. Not always. But I see also, and I maybe want to, to end this before we go to the word. 
You know, <clears throat> Ronnie said something quite remarkable to me uh, during the week. And I thought this is such a beautiful thought. He said, I could talk to Jillian about absolutely anything. And if I get it wrong, then she'll tell me. Not like that. No. That's not right. I don't agree with you. So dear brother and sister, we all have our inclinations and sometimes it tends to lean towards our personalities. And we are not perfect. If we were perfect, then we would not have been here today together assembled. But we learn from each other. We learn from each other because we want to grow towards the image of Jesus. And so, dear brother and sister, we are reminded that we need to remain humble because a humble child of God accepts a teaching. And then Ronnie would say, Ma, okay, okay, sorry, I get it only so many, but but I understand. Dear brother and sister, I'm going to ask the choir to sing for us, please. I believe you have 153 on your program. One ninety, sorry. Brother and sister, allow me to repeat our text word, the first part of it. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And dear Paul, I think we all understand and know that Corinthians was written by Paul. And dear Paul <clears throat> reflects in his letter here, and he says that he understands that you know, while every believer that is on earth is not able to experience, while we are in the body, the fullness of God's presence that we understand. Dear brother, dear sister, dear friend and guest. But maybe also I add that although we are not able to experience this while in the body, it doesn't mean that we do not have contact with God. We are able to, to do this. How do we do this, one would think? Well, we have our prayer life. That is a means to have contact with God. Dear brothers and sisters, we also have a part of our being that is made especially richer 
by the fact that we have a spirit that dwells within us. Let's call it an indwelling spirit, if we can use that term. And it is further sanctified by an apostle, which means that there is an essence of holiness about us. And that is born out of the apostle ministry. And that is a ministry that Jesus has instituted while he was on the face of the earth. And it is ongoing. And then also, dear brother and sister, how do we further strengthen our bond with the Lord? We can partake of the word. We can partake of the sacrament. And this is offered to us continually. We just need to make use of the opportunity, dear brother, dear sister. So although we understand, as Paul has told us, that we are confident, knowing that we are at home in the body, we are not in the presence of God. But he also explains further that we are not ignorant of this, that we are not able to be with God. Because God is a spirit. And we are, we are asked today, so where is our spirit's foundation? The one that, that I serve, is that rooted in the natural world? Are my priorities such that I tend to shy away from living the life that would please God? That I can give of my last as we have been taught in this morning. And maybe I just, one may ask yourself, but you know, why is it that there's no obituary? I think if you knew Jillian well enough, then you would know she doesn't like the fuss and to be placed on a pedestal and be in the limelight and be on a platform to be noticed. So the confidence, dear brothers and sisters, stems out of that relationship with God. And it is seen by all those that comes into contact with you. And others want to be around you. And maybe I share this today. We did not plan to be in each other's company today. We've never come together as a congregation here. It, not, it was not within our plan. But today it's in God's plan. That we are able to be united under the same roof. And whether we meet again... It may be under different circumstances, but not as today. So the confidence that we live out should come from the very core of our being. And it's what drives us. And this is the thing that when we look at this, the, the next part of our text, it speaks about the faith that is not born by sight. And what does that mean to a child of God? Dear brother, dear sister, dear friend and guest, to experience a blessing. Maybe I break that down a little bit further. It is when you are able to, to acknowledge that there has been a stone that has been, I think the word that you used, Ronnie, was not to remove the stone, but the stone has been moved. And there's a difference. Many times we are faced with circumstances and challenges and we, we feel overwhelmed, we feel smothered, we feel lost and isolated, helpless. That's normal. There's a psychological effect that comes upon you and you feel like giving up because of an obstacle, a natural obstacle. And God is able to move natural obstacles to the side doesn't remove it. It just shifts it slightly. And how do we realize that it has been shifted? When we are able to, to absorb and to feel the nearness of God through our faith. And it's a lovely thought. It's a beautiful notion to accept the teaching like this and think, wow, this is really a wonderful message. But can it be ongoing as was Paul? Remember, Paul was not Paul as we... I mean, I think the third of the gospel is written about Paul. 
Paul was a horrible person. He was really someone that you would tend to run away from. But something happened to change him. Something happened to change him. One that had been the, the executioner, the worst person that, when you think of the gospel, you would think, what did the Lord see in Paul? The Lord saw the potential of his faith. The Lord saw that although he is not perfect, I can change him. If in his ignorance he realizes that there is a higher power than his, and a miracle happened in his life as Paul, and his faith was moved to such a degree that he was prepared to change his priorities and he became a champion for God. And we have examples like that amongst us, dear brothers and sisters. They don't need a platform. They don't need an altar. They don't need to be placed on a pedestal. They are amongst us. And they tend to shy away. And they will give up their last. Because that is how we earn a blessing, dear child of God and guest and friend. Our text in the last part of it speaks about the confidence. Yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And one of the things that Paul said is, whether I live, I live for the Lord. And if I die, I die for the Lord. So whether I live or I die, we understand this, dear brother, dear sister. You know, <clears throat> Paul had a, a longing. And it was not because he wanted to run away from those that were out to persecute him, because we can understand also and, and, and well imagine that he had a, quite a big task because people needed to, to change their perception of who he was, to accept the message. But what drove him, even though they did not believe him at first initially, what drove him was the fact that he had this conviction that there is a heavenly home awaiting him, that he is being held back by his body. And his love and his relationship and that he could immerse himself in his prayer life to the point where he realized whether I live or I die it doesn't matter it's not important my purpose my purpose is ongoing and that would drive him from one city to the other and he established many congregations maybe many of them they didn't easily accept him they actually chased him away sometimes because they thought you know what there's nothing that you can give us but he sent servants that he trusted in his stead and so the work continued to grow and so many times we we maybe ask ourselves you know <clears throat> i can understand this about if it comes from that person but when he says it you know ah, you know i've got a problem with that because i remember what he did and what she did and we use, we do that as human beings. I'm also one of them, you know. We tend to remember, not the good, we tend to remember the not so good. And I don't think there's anyone here seated or standing that can say, you know, <clears throat> I've done no wrong. There's nothing, there's no dark, shady part of my life that I am ashamed of. And when we draw closer to the altar, then we don't hide behind those moments, dear brother and sister. We're not proud of them. I think anyone who is proud of that, I think there's maybe other issues at hand. But the strength of the holiness of the spirit that we serve allows us to be honest. And the choir is also sung in moments like these. I need a savior. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing to be with God. Paul speaks about the confidence. 
And the confidence can only be there if we truly understand what is expected of us as a child of God. Where are we going to? And so also we realize that <clears throat> when we mourn as a family, as friends, when we mourn, we don't mourn like those that don't have hope. Because we have put into practice our beliefs. We have lived by those measures that we have been taught. And I can share, yes, Julian was born into a new apostolic home. <clears throat> From a very young age, she understood what it means to be a child of God. And she was unwavering. And <clears throat> Ronnie came to know her under this banner, child of God. He came to, to know her, to befriend her, and they came to love each other. And her love and her commitment drew him to this fellowship. We, we eventually stood behind the altar as a servant of God. And we ask ourselves now, if he was left to his own devices, would he have taken up that responsibility? It is the love of God that Jillian had that was an overwhelming encouragement to Ronnie that said to him, you know, I, I understand. How do I understand? I just need to watch you. I just need to follow you. And because you're my friend, I can see that your values that you aspire to it's true to your core because you are unchanging. And you know what was so beautiful about their relationship was Ronnie said, I could speak to her about anything. Anything. I had no secrets. And that is so beautiful, dear brother, dear sister and friend. It may be for us as those that are fathers and husbands and grandfathers we need to ask ourselves how does a, the beauty of a relationship like that how does it grow to that level you know when, when, when we used to go and work we still do some of us Ronnie and Jillian had a moment <laughs> and what they said was Everybody was at work. It was a wonderful summer day. And they were in the pool. And the thought that they shared was, Boki, we know how a blessing to each other now. And I thought, that is such a beautiful thing to say. Can we be a blessing to each other, dear brother and sister? Or do we have to know each other first? Do we have to know where we come from and the history of our families? And we, and we sometimes frown on the things that we know about or have heard about or pretend to know about. And we cast a shadow. Sometimes unknowingly to us. We cast a shadow when we frown and we say, you know what, I feel uncomfortable when I'm in the company of such a one. Can we look at the last part of our, of our text here, dear brothers and sisters? You know, <clears throat> when we are present with the God, when we are present with the Lord, and we partake of the sacraments and the message and the truth that comes over the altar, then we understand that the manner in which the sacraments have been made available to us was only because of Jesus, only because of His love for us. And He didn't still doesn't concern himself over the shadows that we cast over ourselves and each other even the one that we think you know who are you to want to sing in the choir to want to clean the house how dare you dear brother dear sister you know we often use the example and the illustration when somebody presented themselves in god's kingdom and the question was asked, what are you doing here? Who invited you? Who let you in? 
And the answer was given, you know, I was hanging on the side of a man that didn't deserve to be there. And I said, when you get into your father's kingdom, remember me. And he said to me, today you will be with me in paradise. So if Jesus could have taken the worst criminal that was labeled as such, that was next to him, and allowed him the grace to be in God's kingdom, who are we to judge? Because everybody else did. And we ask ourselves, there's a word that we've become a little bit familiar with. We know that word. Yeah? We become judgmental. Sometimes it's not spoken out loud, but we tend to frown on the presence of one or the other in our company. We shy away from them. And we remember things about one another that you know, the Lord is not happy with because he has allowed a sinner to experience a miracle. Dear brother and sister, and when we have the confidence, when we have the confidence of a child of God, then we realize also that I am not perfect because it costs humility. And sadly, it's not something that can be taught overnight. When you are humble, dear brother and sister, within yourself, it doesn't mean that though you don't have anything to say, you don't have an opinion. We are all entitled to an opinion. But our humility teaches us that others also have an opinion. But mine is mine. And I don't have to instill my opinion on you for you to understand that my opinion is right. Maybe mine is not right. Mine is maybe based on my, my values. We all come from different circumstances and different backgrounds and different upbringings. And so there will obviously be varying degrees of, of what we perceive to be normal. And based on our sense of normality, we have our values. And that molds us to the point where we instill it within our family lives. And that becomes normal for the family. And I share with you something which I have spoken about earlier. Is that when your prayer life is normal, it is normal. And I say, you know, you only have to do something three times for it to become a habit. But the first time it feels uncomfortable. The second time you feel a little less awkward. The third time you start to understand that, you know, maybe there is, maybe there is something that I just need to overcome. And then it can become normal. That's habit forming, dear brother, dear sister. And that is prayer life. And when, as Jolin has expressed that your prayers can move mountains, that stems out of humility. And that is beautiful. And that means also that we have that relationship with God. It means that we have that understanding that I am not perfect, but neither is my brother. So although he is not perfect, I also look in the mirror and I say, Lord, can you help me to be a help to others? Because none of us are perfect. And although we sometimes partake unwittingly of the darker side of life and it, and, it, and it blemishes our souls, and we struggle as humans to admit that we have done wrong. We struggle also to, to realize that there is a part of my makeup that keeps me from that place that he set out for me. And remember, dear brother and sister, I maybe want to conclude with this thought that we are busy preparing our place in eternity today. How we justify our place in eternity depends on how we live our lives out. So our message for today is 
that we are confident in the body, yes, but we are absent from the Lord. We need to work on our faith, dear brother and sister. And while we are confident, we want to rather be present with God. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I am now going to <clears throat> do the committal of the soul. And after I have done that, dear brothers and sisters, I'm just going to ask the one that has been asked to do the eulogy to, to kindly come to, to the altar. And once he's, he's done that, <clears throat> and then we will do the blessing and the cottage will, will then leave. Uh, the, the also. Can I ask that we rise, please? <clears throat> I now surrender the mortal body to the earth with the words earth to earth, ashes to ashes, soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall guard over it until the resurrection. To eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear kind, loving and eternal Father, we are mindful in this moment, Father, that there are many aspects of our lives that we have needed to take stock of, Father. And so we bow before you in deep humility. And we are mindful also, Father, of the fact that you have granted us an exemplary person within our lives, Father, to lead us also as a mother to a children and also as a friend to a husband and also those that have come to know her as those that have been associates of the family, Father. We ask also, please, in this morning that you would grant her a safe passage. Father, to there where she needs to take up a place. We know that the work is ongoing, Father, and there are those that, that welcomes her with open arms, Father. We are mindful also that there's much work that needs to be done, not only here, Father, but also in the beyond. And so we thank you, Father, that you have allowed us these moments within the four courts of your temple, Father. We ask also, please, that you would guard over Jillian Charmaine Nolan, Father, where she takes up a place now, Father, and that you also will be allowed the opportunity to spread the word and the gospel, Father. May she continue to be an inspiration to us through a legacy that she leaves behind, Father. And we ask also, please, that you would guard over us, Father. We ask it in your Son, Jesus Christ, and sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Could I ask for the eulogy to be read now? Thank you.
was Herman Sinclair. From 1999 to 2000, everybody planned a huge including army. <laughs> and as you know, Ronald, he takes out all the stops. And the theme for that party was Hawaii. <laughs> but then, then Julian informed Ronnie that we are on our way. And these people here, they must go. And brothers and sisters, you know, the day I saw, the day I saw the saying is so true. Dynamite comes in small packages. <laughs> and this was brilliant. And Jerry said it in a very nice way. A funny, you know, and I'll say the same thing after comes. If we don't stop this, I don't know how. That was Jerry. Very straightforward, and she won't go back anything when she wants to make a point. That's what she told her. Yes. Our relationship grew and our bond became stronger over the years. Jillian was just an amazing person, a great personality, and a good heart. She would go out of her way to make our stay happy and comfortable and never take no Jolien and Ronnie like to entertain. I think it's more wrong. <laughs> and their home was always full of things. And when we are visited from time to time, the house will always be full. And that is how our circle of things became more bigger. You know the saying? Make the circle big. And Ronnie created and Jolien that opportunity for us to make our Circle of things so much bigger when we are here in Cape Town. Tony loves to spoil the children, and even mine, mine as well. When in Cape Town to visit my mother in law, the boys refuse to stay in one year. They have nothing against one year, but they refuse to stay in the inner ones because they need to buy in a community and in the basin. And they say, no ways, we want to go to the running and I'm teaching him because there's even a swimming pool. <laughs> you know, my mother-in-law made peace with the fact that we will stay in North Line for the duration of our holiday. Tell him was like a power line. I know we all know what's that. She will never sit down in the prison. She always wants to make sure that you're right. Can we get here, man? We can think here, yes, yes, I'll be here from. And that is the thing. Always busy to make you feel comfortable, happy, and she just wants to give up herself when you are there with her. Jillian had a very good and giving heart. You will never leave without, when you visit, you will never leave without. Although you say, no one, I am a person. Come what may, better for the devil. Brothers and sisters, friends and family, um, and you know what? And when we leave, Jolie will always put something in her hand. If you know one, I'd say, this is the part. That was Jolie. That is why I'm getting another beautiful part of, of Jolie. What I always admire Jolien is when Ronnie will buy a combo. I don't know if someone knows the poison. I came down to turn and I came to learn it here with Ronnie. Once I had friends over to visit Ronnie, and Ronnie said, Oh, once a for a combo. <laughs> and everybody took me. And when Ronnie, now we were waiting for him, and this friend, I knew what to combo, but I didn't say anything. And when they came back, she thought, Ronnie pays me for it. Now you know what's a combo, and I learned it's a bottle of rich. A tongue and a puppet. That's the combo. And then she was like, Here we need a little bit of three legs. That's the end. Thank you.
education. It's a great people. But you know what happens after that? Then she will have double the energy and speak double so much. <laughs> Jillian was a, a bundle of joy and we always spend time with her. She will be surely, but we accept the word. Thank you very much. I also want to take the opportunity, brothers and sisters, as I've also been asked, I was summoned by Ronnie. And you know when you are summoned by Ronnie, they can be a second. You can say that. Can we rise, please? <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear, kind, merciful, eternal Father, we are, Father, still struggling to absorb that which you have granted us, Father, to experience. But we know that this is a living altar. We take nothing for granted, Father, that you have singled us out to be assembled here today as a special congregation, Father. We thank you for your love and your patience with us. We will never truly comprehend, Father, what your Son had to go through to allow us to be gathered here today, Father. But our faith allows us to absorb and to accept, Father, that we are indeed special. And so we thank you in advance for the blessings which we have received, Father. And we thank you also, Father, that you have allowed us Father, a special word and a message today. We ask us especially, Father, that you would watch over us now as we separate and leave here now, Father. We are mindful, Father, that there are many challenges which still lies ahead, Father, and that the road forward for the family, Father, is not going to be an easy one, but this we understand to be the reward of love. And so your son also cried for, for those that, would, that struggled to accept his love for them, Father, but in our faith, we look forward and we say, Father, that we also want to be found worthy if you fulfill your promise, Father. Be it in this day, we ask that you would find us worthy. We ask it in your Son, Jesus Christ's name's sake. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace and love of God, our Father, and the comforting fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, <coughs> our closing hymn, the congregation will sing number 222, number 222, while the cortege leaves the church. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, the choir, my apologies. Before we leave the choir, we'll close with an anthem number 264. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Can I ask the poll bearers to come forward, please? Congregation will rise and sing number 222 in the English hymnal. 222 in the English hymnal.
Thank you so much. Nice to you.